Hey, I'm Al Emmerich, and it's time for our next Creator Campfire Chat. You have this idea, you have this innovation, you have this project that you want to introduce to the world. And that's the fun part, creating it, building it, marketing it, sharing it. And then there's the magic number, what it costs. That's, that's the part nobody wants to deal with, but yet it is the most important part that you have to deal with. What is your magic number? What does it really cost to build this thing? Time to take a look. Everybody loves their, their gadgets, their cool items, but do you ever wonder what they really cost? Take, for example, an iPhone. Pretty expensive, right? You ever wonder what it costs to make? How about this number right here? $198.70 and 70 cents to make an iPhone. That's broken down in two basic categories. You've got your manufacturing costs, and that's about eight bucks. And then you've got your components and your technology, which comes to 190.70 for a grand total of $198.70. I don't know about you, but I paid a lot more than that. The bottom line is, if you don't know what it costs to make your project, your model, your design, your next great thing for one spark, well then you'll never be able to understand what your break even is and how to turn a profit and, and how to be you know, successful down the long term. So in order to start this process, there's a couple of things you need to do. There's actually many, but we're gonna keep it real high level for the purposes of this discussion. And first is to understand the different types of costs, all right? First up, you've got assets, all right? And then you've got expenses. Simple enough, not unlike a household. So assets are those long-term, perhaps one-time expenditures that you're gonna get your business off the ground. Maybe it's the purchase of land or a big piece of equipment. Things that are gonna be around for a long term that you can amortize over the course of time into your, your finance and budget plan. Unlike expenses, which are variable throughout time, it could be your rent, it could be marketing costs, it could be supplies and materials to make your project, which will fluctuate as sales increase or decrease. Assets and expenses, understanding these two principles allows you to better categorize your types of expenses, which of course is so important in figuring out your real cost. Another important equation that's very important is your total cost, which is a function of your fixed costs plus your variable costs. Now, I could spend an hour, which you probably don't have, going into these in great detail. But inside the written blog section uh, that hopefully you're gonna read is uh, some links for you on this, and also we go into this in, in greater depth. But either way, it all points to one thing. You understanding what your costs are, then go ahead and assigning those costs into their different functions so you can know where your money's being spent and how you need to make it back for your profit. Once you've figured out where you need to spend your money, you need to prioritize it and assign cost to it. Prioritizing it is gonna be a function of your overall strategy, so you can determine where you're spending your money, but also when that money needs to be spent. Assigning cost can be very challenging, because if you've never dealt with how to price and, and figure out your expenses for certain things, you may not know where to go. Well, it's hard, but there's resources available to you. First of all, the internet. Small Business Administration is a great resource. I've provided a link in the written blog for you. That's a great resource, not only from a data standpoint, but also they offer professional coaching and can give you some insight. Speaking of insight, how about talking to experts? Go to like industries. You don't have to give up your secret sauce, so to speak, but talk to folks. You know, if it's a restaurant idea, for example, go talk to some restaurateurs. If it's manufacturing a new clothing line, talk to some stores and some manufacturers and some folks at retail outlets to try to go ahead and get a sharper idea and a more clearer picture of what it costs to go ahead and build, make, manufacture, and sell and market your product. So here's a few things that you can do to determine that number. One of the first things I'd recommend is get a money mentor. If you're not a financial expert or you don't have a background in accounting and finance, find somebody that does and bring them aboard your team. Add them to your pool of talent and diversity at the dinner table, so to speak. This will really ensure that you have good sound financial background on your team, which helps you get a better idea of what things really cost. Next up, examine all potential cost centers and expenses to start up your business. Not just start it up, 
then keep it running. Do some long-range planning. Your financial plan should at least extend out to three to five years, if not further. Nothing beats talking to somebody who's been there and done that. That's why talking to other entrepreneurs can be very helpful. Even though they may, may not be subject matter experts in what you're creating, they've gone through the entrepreneurial experience. And there's kind of this shared brethren and sisterhood among entrepreneurs because there's shared experience of success and failure, how to do it right, how to do it wrong. And gain that perspective will also help you for the numbers game. The last two are perhaps the most important. That's be realistic and be honest. Sometimes the numbers just don't add up. And in an earlier blog, we talked about that mirror on the wall and have to, how you have to be ready for rejection, but also be ready if your idea doesn't work. Well, sometimes the numbers force your hand. It could be the greatest idea. People could be behind it. It could be passionate. There's all these folks who care, which is important. But if the numbers don't add up, then you're not going to be successful. So be realistic in those numbers. Don't try to fudge them so that it looks good. Be realistic and be honest with yourself. If the rubber hits the road and this isn't a financially viable model, it may be time to step away. On the other side of the coin, your numbers, if they're real, could end up being wildly successful for you. And that's when the fun begins. That's it for the magic number. We'll talk to you the next time around the campfire. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Leave your questions or comments in the video comments section. You can tweet them to at B1Spark using the hashtag, hashtag Campfire Chats. Check us out December 18th. Tune in at 1 o'clock for Creator Campfire Chats Live, where we'll answer your questions and dive deeper into the topics we cover in these videos. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to the OneSpark channel and go to B1Spark.com to learn more about showcasing your project in 2014.